continue with my holiday home tour and show you my living room, but I thought it might be kind of fun if I revealed it to you from the same perspective that my boys when they were little, and I guess even now that they're big, would see it for the first time on Christmas morning. So they'd come down these stairs. In the past, it would be festooned in greenery and all sorts of different ornamentation. But this year, I'm being a little bit more simplified in my holiday decor. It's just my husband and myself staying home and being safe. So I streamlined it a little bit. But I want you to come with me and I'll show you what is revealed to them after Santa came to town. And so here we are in front of my fireplace. The stockings are hung with great care because I've got lots of candles lit and I try to make it as magical as possible. I'm sure you do too. Let me give you a little bit of detail about my holiday decor, a little bit of how Christmas unfolds at my house um, and some of my favorite things, starting with the music that you're hearing. This is my favorite CD of all time. It was gifted to me by my friend Gayla and at the time she said it was her favorite CD. If you've watched my videos for any length of time, you know I have a real fondness for piano music. And this, and I'll make sure to put a link below, but this is Danny Wright's Christmas. That's W-R-I-G-H-T. I love his piano music. If you want to treat yourself, then make a, a station on Pandora called Danny Wright Holiday because it's absolutely beautiful. It's all piano music. It's quiet. It's lovely. I can work to it and it really sets, I think, a beautiful, beautiful tone. So that is number one. Number two, this is my 1935 house. All of this woodwork is original. And this year I decided pretty much just to go with natural elements. I normally do, but this year I am especially being vigilant about that. You won't see lots of uh, metallic glittery baubles. Um, I, I personally find that uh, a little bit garish for my home, for my home in particular, not necessarily yours. I like to have lots of candles lit. Um, it's, candlelight is one of the most indispensable things to me for the holidays, and I keep lots of Trader Joe's dripless candles on hand at all times because I really love the way they light and the way they burn and they're inexpensive. So you can see that the mantle is just decorated with greenery, with arbor vita and some juniper that's all cut from my garden. Um, I love showing not only the greenery, but part of the limbs themselves. And I like the way that they kind of frame whatever it is I'm trying to highlight. I have a whole collection of pine cones. Again, pine cones are one of the indispensable things to me over Christmas time. I have a couple of tubs filled with them of all different sizes. These long, large sugar pine cones I actually got in Lake Tahoe a hundred years ago. And all of these uh, dried pomegranates I've had for years. I save them from one year to the next. Sometimes they come out at Thanksgiving and sometimes they come out at Christmas time. Now, one of the magical things that happens uh, on Christmas Eve is that these pretty stockings, these twall stockings that I have here, will be switched out with my kids' traditional stockings that I have needle pointed or that they think of as their very own. That way they're kind of not tempted. These are just the pretty ones. I like to fill them with pine cones and greenery. A little bit later on, I'll show you that I also like to wrap tiny little gifts in whatever my 
um, thematic gift wrap is for the season and tuck them in there along with candy canes and things. I'm dispensing with some of the candy and things this year because uh, for well for obvious reasons. One thing that's very traditional at my house that always gets wrapped as if it's a real gift and tuck in, tucked inside their stockings are those old lifesaver books that you used to get when you were a kid. Remember when you would do the classroom exchange? Stuart's nodding his head. And that was always the best gift that you could get were those lifesaver books. So as a nod to the past, both my own and my boys, I always get them a lifesaver book, even now as adults, and wrap them and stick them in their stockings. So I, one, another thing that I find indispensable are these little battery operated tea lights. I have them everywhere in my living room. I'll try to put a link to below. I buy them off of Amazon. They actually have a remote control that goes along with them. So it makes them very easy to turn them on and off, especially because I've got them tucked into all sorts of, of tight little spaces. So that's basically my mantle. I do want to tell you something very special It's one of my most prized possessions and that's this Shapiro oil painting and let me give you a little story about this um, it's actually been restored when my husband and I I think two or three weeks after we met someone broke into his home and torched it they stole all of his electronics stole all of his valuables and then they torched his home and I was actually babysitting his cat. I went over to feed his cat and there was a fireman standing in the front yard and I had to call him in Austin to tell him that his, uh, his home had not burnt to the ground, but it had suffered a lot of damage. It was the first time I talked to his dad on the phone. Um, and so every time, and he also was so calm when I told him. So whenever I look at this painting, I'm so pleased that we were able to restore it. It reminds me of how calm my husband is in a crisis and the loving way that his father responded to me from the very beginning. So I just wanted to share that uh, little story with you because it really means something to me. So come over here with me. Now, first of all, you can see my kind of out of place TV. I'm very much uh, in Sapotico with Brian Branton who did his home tour yesterday because in these older homes, there's just not really a lot of good places to put your, your TV and they kind of stick out like a sore thumb. For years, I resisted having a TV in my living room, and then I realized that what that did was just relegate my living room to wasted space. And that is just not, that doesn't make sense. All rooms of your home should be lived in. So I put a TV in here, um, and now we can lounge on the couch. It's fun, it's a gathering place. Old homes in general are not good for TV viewing, especially with a crowd. But we go to my friends with more modern homes for that kind of activity anyway. But it's kind of cozy to sit here in front of the fireplace and watch a movie. Oh, one other thing, let me backtrack. This is a gas burning little furnace. It is an antique that came with the house. It sets into the inset of where the fireplace would be. In these 1930s houses, they didn't have wood burning fireplaces. The one that I have in my kitchen, we actually installed ourselves, but this gives us great heat. It has saved us through multiple ice storms when our power went out. It creates a really nice, um, a nice warm atmosphere, I think, that's very, very cozy. It's a great source of comfort to us. Now, I, I have this lit for you right now, but that's only because this is special. I also have my concrete Santa over here that was given to me by a client years ago with another candle. In real life, I would not have this furnace lit with any of this in front of it because for obvious reasons, um, I'm, we're pretty scared of fire around here. Um, one other thing that might be fun for you to know, I think this is a wonderful idea. If any of you have really old magazines um, or new magazines that will become old and you're trying to kind of clear some things out of your house and gift them to someone else, this is a great idea. My husband visited a childhood friend of his in Colorado not too long ago 
who has a huge inventory of these old life magazines that are just really too precious to discard offhandedly, I think. So whenever anyone comes to visit him, he asks them what their birth year is and their birth month. And if he has an issue that relates to that or his, that his birth year, then he will give them that or the issue that is closest to their birth date. And I think it's just a wonderful nod to history and a great way um, to kind of share your things with others that you find valuable. And my husband looked through the whole thing. He got a dose of history and also a little flashback in time. Now, let me show you this. This is the vestibule. This is actually my front door. All of these rounded, architectural deta details are original to the house and it's a, a little vestibule even though we don't use our front yard a lot or our front door a lot I'm going to show you a couple of things number one this is kind of exciting don't tell but I've got a tub in here that contains wrapped up very carefully um, Jamie's my husband hubs mother's china that we're going to gift to my son and his fiance for Christmas time. They have always loved it and I've got it kind of stored in here. And here's my old fashioned mail slot. And then this is kind of a fun little detail. This is a little window peek so you could see what guests were at your, at your door before you opened the door itself. And look at that. Isn't that magical? It's actually snowing outside. Stuart, see if you can pan over from my perspective. I love being able to look outside and seeing my neighbor's holiday decorations. And when the tulips are in bloom, I sometimes come to this front door and just peek through this little window. I find it absolutely charming. It's one of my favorite things in the house. Now, if you come this way, you can kind of see a vantage point of the steps again and how my boys would come down the steps. Now come this way. And let me talk to you a little bit about these bookshelves. Now these are actually reproductions but they hold some of mine and my husband's very favorite books. Um, they're just prized. This is where I keep all of my children's favorite books from when they were little, if you give a moose a muffin. That way I know which ones I want to save for them when they're older. There, that's very Christmassy. And when they were here and when they were little, then I would pull out all of the holiday ones, whatever the season was, and I'd put them on my coffee table. Let me show you something else. This is my favorite picture of myself and my boys when they were little, right in front of our enormous oak tree in the front. So you can see another reason why when anything happens to that oak tree, I get so upset. It's not a very pretty picture frame. I need to change that out. Uh, but these are just some things that are really valuable to me. Another thing that they house, my son um, has a degree in literary translation and he speaks fluent Hindi and some Russian. And a lot of his prized texts that um, are in Hindi and are in Russian, we keep in here. And just our most valuable, some of our most valuable possessions, some of my husband's, he's, he's got a degree in anthropology, so some of his artifacts we keep in here. And then again, I like to use a lot of these little tea lights, and I like the way that just a few of them scattered in here kind of illuminate the space. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I. I didn't spend as much time as I normally spend decorating my living room, uh, but I'm not gonna pretend that 
creating something like this doesn't take some time. It does. And I do it over a period of days. I do a little bit every day, partly because I have to fit in some work in there, but also because I find that like my garden, it's an organic process and I kind of come up with an idea and then I enjoy that thematic kind of just um, revealing itself to me over time. So this year, my initial Initial point of inspiration was some gift wrap that I saw and I'll show it to you and actually also the storm damage from my tree it um, reminded me of how precious our woodlands are and um, and so I used some of, of things that were precious to me in my Christmas decor so you can kind of see over here the woodland theme that I've got. This is normally my book table. Um, if you want to go back in time, you can see the video that I did where I found this broken pot. And I loved its kind of, oh, it looked like ruins. And I loved the way it looked. So I filled it with some wonderful amaryllis from Color Blends. You can see that they are just about, this is one of the most magical things at Christmas time for me are these big, fat, voluptuous buds. And these are gonna be absolutely gorgeous. I believe these are double delicious. I got these from Color Blends. And then I've just festooned the entire arrangement with some eucalyptus branching that dries beautifully. Lots of my prized pine cones. I've top dressed it in some sheet moss that I got from my florist. And then because I always like things to have a little bit more stature, I elevate it on a plant stand, on a metal plant stand, which also provides a support to wrap some of the greenery and the little fairy lights that I like so much. And then I think also that kind of speaks to this woodland theme are these large antlers. This is kind of a fun way to reuse and repurpose something. This is a little salt, or excuse me, cream and sugar set that was given to me by my sister-in-law. It's an antique and I've just placed some votive candles in here and I am using it to hold some tea lights. Here are some of those paper white nice narcissus that I forced. And I'll put a link below to these wonderful little supports that you can get off of Amazon. They're very inexpensive. I think I got about six of them for just under $5. And they are a wonderful support for all of my bulbs. You can see the other pot of bulbs I did over here. And then Stuart, if you can show in the back, there's one of my free topiaries of just a laurel that I dug up from my yard. You've seen them before outside in my garden. And I top dressed it with some sheet moss. And here is the wonderful gift wrap that I got that looks like, like deer fur. And I like it to wrap my gifts and have them be part of the decor itself. I've got little bips and baubles and twigs and things that I decorate the package with. And it kind of, again, just served to inspire the rest of what's going on here. Now this is definitely a gardener's tableau. This Christmas tree, I think I told you I was inspired by a very tall, slim, cylindrical shape this year. And so that is the shape that I adopted for my Christmas tree. This is a Fraser fir. And at the end of this video, I'll put a practical, it'll be kind of a double feature. I'll put a practical um, addition here where you can see how I set up my Christmas tree, the Christmas tree stand I used so that I could place it in a basket because I wanted that organic feel. Not a lot of Christmas decorations this year. They're all pine cones, a few lights, some cotton bowls. These are all rose hips that actually came out of a birthday arrangement that my friend Jenny gave to me and I've repurposed them here. 
And then I've got just a very few ornaments on here that look kind of like snowy deer and lots and lots of pine cones. So this year I was very simple. I also tucked in here some of, I told you another indispensable thing to me is spray paint during the holidays. So some of the leaves and things that I've spray painted, some of which I save from year to year, I tucked into the foliage. It looks almost as if it's blown in there. And I like the way that that looks. Periodically also, if I want it to look as if it's a bit uh, snow kissed, I'll tuck some cotton and things into the pine cones to make it look as if they are just, um, there's a whisper of snow on them. So back in here, I've got some more evergreens. That is an Arizona cypress that I got at Whole Foods this year that will later be relegated to the outdoors, a lemon cypress. This area in here, because it's close to the window, stays very cool. I make sure to keep them watered. Um, it gets bright light because this is a southern exposure. So I can keep these in here for a couple of weeks before they have to go outside and show any signs of distress. Again, I've got some battery operated lanterns and things that are back in here. Um, I also love magnolia pods. So I have some magnolia pods that I use to decorate my packages. And here's some little acorn tops that have been spray painted. That's that wonderful Dragon Prince Cryptomeria from Southern Living. I'm actually, that's part of a gift and I'm going to do a video to show you how I sometimes gift plants in baskets and things. This is a really fun idea. This is a, an, another amaryllis with one of those stands or supports on it. And then this is a little seed starter that I've put some snips in from Bridgetown Tools. I'll put links below. But this is part of a gift that I'm going to give to my kids and I'm going to fill it with succulents. And I think they'll really they'll really like that because they're very, they're very young and hip and, and so many of you young viewers are really into succulents and things, and things like that. Here's another one of my free topiaries that I dug up from outside. I think I have about five of these. There were cherry laurels that just the birds planted. And this is a little juniper with some tiny little pine cones. And then in keeping with the packages being part of the decor, you can see how I've got another giant pine cone on there with some more of that eucalyptus foliage. So also, let me point out to you um, my dining room that's not yet decorated. And if you guys like these kinds of videos, I'm outside of my comfort zone a little bit coming inside. Um, Stuart does the best he can with lighting and everything in my old house with its mahogany woodwork. But if you like these kind of videos, please subscribe, comment, share it with your friends. Let me know what you think. And more importantly, I love it when you share. I can't always respond to every comment, but I promise you I do read them. Please let me know some of your very favorite things, your very favorite Christmas music. Um, one of your, of your very favorite Christmas memories, um, one very special tradition that may not be the norm, you know, something other than just making cookies or whatever, but some tradition that's really special to you and your family, because it's those kinds of things that I think make the holidays, uh, in some ways for some people, the best time of the year. Uh, I, I really think it creates kind of a beautiful tableau. A couple of other things before I sign off. Um, Stuart, if you could just point to that map that's in the corner over there and the arrangement of different natural oh, biblos that I've got up there, those are all spray painted treasures that I've had for years. I spray painted them in gold and over the years they've aged and gotten more burnished. And I love the way they almost look like carved wood. 
such an easy thing to do. These are treasures that I put in this same place every year, and I love the way they look. And again, all of that was just a gift of Mother Nature. They were just all forged items that I found and tried to kind of transform in some, some kind of magical way. I leave them up all through January because I think they look so beautiful. And then in the spirit of Christmas, I want to close um, just showing you a, a couple more practical, th practical things and, and treasures that I have. Uh, number one, you may be wondering pragmatically how I can keep all of that watered without disturbing the entire tableau. And look at how beautiful it looks with that snow in the background. I planned that. I planned that just for you guys. So I want to show you this. This is a Christmas tree funnel, a Christmas tree watering device. And all you have to do is just stick it through the foliage of the Christmas tree down into the Christmas tree holder and you can water it. And I can water all of these things without disturbing the entire tableau. It works brilliantly. Um, I'll try to put a link below. And then I want to show you one other thing that's really special to me. And I was going to put some greenery on these portraits this morning to finish this room, but then it snowed and I didn't, and I didn't get out there. But I want to show you two images that I think are, are, they're special to me and I think they're very, it's very serendipitous. This is my husband's father, Bud, Bud Vodder, a really handsome man. He was a B-17 bomber pilot in World War II as was my father, coincidentally, also another handsome man. And they were in the same training location, unbeknownst to them, this Oklahoman and this Indiana Hoosier. They trained in the same area in Texas, literally within weeks of one another. And we discovered that a little bit later um, after my husband and I got engaged and we were just talking about our family histories. They're both gone right now, but I love these, these old fashioned portraits here. They're really special to me, as are you. So thank you for coming into my home, um, into my little world. I hope you enjoyed it. It's not the garden, but it definitely has the feel and the flavor of a garden home at Christmas time. Thank you all. Merry Christmas.